Hello there, welcome to today's tree identification video. So in today's video, I'm going to be identifying several common types of trees. Now as you see, it's late autumn. So early November, a lot of the leaves have fallen onto the ground. So we're going to be using the bark as our primary method of identification. Now, identifying a specific type of tree could be useful if you need a specific type of tree for a purpose whether it's for its strength, flexibility, or just looks, knowing what trees have specific properties could be really useful. Now, before you go scouting, I suggest reading about some of the local trees you have in your area. This will really help you determine which ones you might have. There's no point in looking for a tree that doesn't even exist in your area, so be mindful of that. So, let's get scouting. Here we have maple. Maple is probably one of the most common species in my woodlot, so it's really easy to find and identify. When you take a look at its bark, it really does vary, but most of the time it'll be around gray, grayish. It won't ever be black or completely white. It might have a few marks on it. And one important thing to remember is as it grows, it'll start growing furrows in it, like this one. This is a maple tree, you can see by its big furrows. So this is a bigger maple. So in my forest, it's literally covered with little sapling maples. You can see pretty much all these twigs out of the ground are maple saplings. So here is a leaf from a sugar maple. So it's kind of yellowish brownish, which tells it apart. If it was reddish, it would be red maple. So you can see that it's got three big lobes, and on each lobe, it's got three smaller lobes. It's probably the main way you can distinguish it. Now if you see a leaf that looks like a maple, but it's a bit different in form, it's most likely another species of maple. So here is sugar maple. If you see anything that looks different, if you see anything that has a different form, most likely it's a different species of maple. The maple tree is probably one of my favorite trees, and that's because you can make maple syrup with it. Yep, that's right, you heard me. Maple syrup. Now, not out of a sapling, but once you find a bigger tree like this, this will definitely give, get you some maple syrup. During the springtime, drill one hole inside and grab a peg, put it in, and there you go. You've got syrup dripping out, you could collect it. And the best thing is, though, you don't have to boil the syrup. You can just eat it straight from the tree. Now, it can be contaminated by some bacteria, and it obviously won't be as high in sugar content as if you were to boil it, but it still tastes really good as a quick snack. Here we have a beech tree. When it is young, its spark will appear grayish slash white, and it's going to be smooth. And most trees, when they grow older, they start to gain furrows. Beech trees, however, they remain smooth during their entire lives. So no matter how big they'll get, they'll always have a smooth bark. Here we can see a woodpecker, drilled a few holes in it, probably while searching for some bugs underneath the bark. See it goes all the way up there. So here's the leaf of the beech. Now it's very easily distinguished too. It's got these kind of lobes, but at the same time they're kind of toothed. Kind of like this. Now the leaves fall out very late into the season, so if you see a tree with leaves on like this during the winter, it's probably a beech tree. Especially with smooth bark, this is probably one of the most easiest trees to identify. Now despite it being the most easy to identify, it's probably had the least use to me at least. Now the wood is pretty normal, it's not strong, it doesn't look too good, and it's not too flexible, but the bark... The bigger tree's bark can be used if you're making something that needs really smooth bark on really big scales. So there we go, here's the beech tree. So here we have an oak tree. Now an oak tree does have fairly easily distinguished bark, it's grey. But the main thing that sets us apart from others is that it's got these furrows like this. Brown type of furrows that open up like this. The older bark does become, does start having bigger furrows like this. This is not an oak tree, this is a maple tree. Now this tree has its leaves on and 
interestingly, interestingly enough, they're still green. Now, I believe this is because it's either a new tree, it started blossoming later in the season, or it came close to dying, so it was barely living, so then it had to start producing green leaves to continue its life. So maybe it was attacked by fungus, maybe its soil was clogged, something clearly went wrong with this tree. Now, since leaves are on, I could show you them. The leaves are pretty much... They pretty much have three big lobs on both sides. Very easily distinguished. Now, oak trees do have acorns, and guess who loves acorns? Not humans, because they are poisonous. I mean, you can treat them with a special process to make them edible to humans, but that's not the main reason why. Mainly deer and squirrels. Deer and squirrels both love acorn. In fact, it's probably their most favorite foods. At least I know that's for deer. So hunters, you need to know where the big oak trees are. Because where the big oaks will be, will be where the deer will be. When you find a big oak, that's probably where a deer is going to be too. Because it's going to have it as its main food source. And during the evenings and mornings, that's where it's going to be most of the time. It's very much an all-purpose tree. It's strong. It's flexible. I like it for for I like it for its strong wood. It's very good for making bows and such. Pretty interesting tree. So there you go. If you guys have any tips or advice, feel free to leave them down below. Also, I would love to hear some of the uses you guys have found for several different types of trees. Oh. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.